Hello, it's lovely to be with you again for this uh, SCBA reflection. I uh, hope you're well and as you're preparing for Christmas, uh, I pray God's blessing on you, uh, your families uh, and uh, your churches uh, in a Christmas that's likely to be quite different uh, for all of us. Uh, today, uh, in this reflection, I'd like us to think a little bit about uh, the different ways in which God communicates uh, with us. As I've been reading again the uh, Christmas narrative, uh, I've been surprised to see the many and varied ways that God communicates. Now, I, I love this book. God's Word uh, for me has changed my life. I, I've been a Christian now for 45 years, uh, and it's been a rare day when I've not spent time in His Word. I thank God for it. He, it's my... Uh, it's my nourishment, the bread of heaven. Uh, it's the lamp for my feet that, that guides me. Um, I've gone back to a time and again um, to, to teach me as a, as a, as a husband um, and, and as a father. Uh, if, if you like, if those of you who've done some wallpapering, <laughs> it's my plumb line. But I'm also aware that, of course, this is the primary source that God speaks to us, but it's not the only source. Uh, and we find that uh, in the Christmas story. Uh, God used angels uh, on a number of occasions uh, to communicate to his people. Uh, he used dreams. And uh, one of the things that makes me smile is that uh, every encounter that Joseph has with, uh, with his living God, he's fast asleep. <laughs> And of course, he communicates uh, to uh, a, a special group of people, mysterious people. We know very little about them, but he used creation and the cosmos especially in communicating and guiding them to the Messiah. And, and that has a particular place in my heart because, uh, as some of you will know, I, I didn't grow up in a in a Christian home. My, my grandparents were Christians, but my mum and dad weren't. Uh, and I remember distinctly at the age of 13, uh, I'd been to school, uh, I'd been to a biology lesson. I remember uh, being sat at the back of the class because that's where I tended to sit. Uh, there, the biology teacher, who was a, a, a wonderful lady, a great teacher, uh, but she had a particular worldview. And, and within that worldview, there was no place for God. And so she made this announcement to the class that those of us um, who may believe in God, she, she wanted to put us right and, and just say categorically that science had disproved God. I was only a boy. I was 13 year old from the Welsh Valleys. And I, I had a lot of respect for that teacher. And so I took on board what she was saying. But there was something within me, like that grit, I guess, in an oyster, that just didn't sit properly. Uh, I remember, I, well, I lived on a mountain. I was Welsh, of course, we lived on a mountain. Um, and I remember um, one evening just walking further up the mountain, and, and I was lying there, and it was quite late at night, and uh, I, I look back on it now, and I, and I think, what on earth was I doing up there as a 13-year-old uh, on a mountain in the dark? Uh, but that's where I was. And as I lay on my back, I staring up uh, into the night sky, there was no light pollution. And so all I could see was this myriad of stars. Stars like I'd never seen them before. Some were twinkling. Others were incredibly bright. Others seemed to come into view and then, then go out of view. And, and as I was transfixed by this panorama, and I remember saying to myself, I don't believe it. I just don't believe that this just happened. And in those moments, uh, this young boy dared to ask the question, could I possibly ever know the one who created the stars? A created me. I didn't know what to call this thing, but I knew, even as a boy, 
that we just didn't happen. Move forward uh, some time. Uh, here I am as a, a regional minister uh, working within Southern Counties Baptist Association. And can, and can I just say, this is coming to my third year working uh, within uh, the association. I just want to say thank God for you and for the way that you've welcomed Sue uh, and myself into your family. We, we love being part we love being part of what we're trying to do here uh, within this association. And, uh, and, and I know I speak on behalf of uh, my colleagues. We, we can't wait to get back out uh, and meet with you uh, personally. But just the other day, uh, I, was, um, I, I was reading uh, something from the BBC News website. Uh, and uh, there was a, a heading there that uh, struck me. Uh, it talked about the 100 most influential women in the world, fascinated um, by that headline. And so I started to look at some of the women, uh, most of whom I'd never heard of. Uh, and I came across one uh, that I'd never heard of before, uh, and uh, she, she's a nun. And her name is Maggie Gobran, uh, known as uh, Mama Maggie, and she works as a nun in the Orthodox Church in Cairo and for the last 25 years uh, she has been used mightily by God to reach thousands upon thousands of the poorest of poor children in society. Uh, from a headline in uh, the news feed that I get it became a God moment where God spoke so clearly into my heart about the importance of putting uh, people uh, and those especially at the margins at the centre of my being. Uh, the role that we have as churches to reach out into parts of society that others frankly cannot reach and, and will not reach. It just burnt within me. And it was quite remarkable how God spoke to me just through a BBC headline and then clicking on the link. It is amazing how God communicates. As some of you also know, I love to go out cycling. And we live in a beautiful part of West Oxfordshire. And so it's easy for us to get out into the countryside. And every time I go out on my bike, I'm struck again by God's beautiful creation. Uh, I pass field after field that are filled with sheep and earlier in the year lambs that were springing everywhere and it does something to me. I, I remember asking myself the question, why, why do sheep have such an impact on me? Well, well I, guess, I guess there's a number of reasons. One, at the age of 15, just two years after that encounter with God um, as I gaze up at the night sky, Two years later, uh, after I'd been on a journey uh, of exploration, I came to know Christ on a farm in the middle of nowhere, 15 young people and about 15,000 sheep. And so every time I see a sheep, I think about that remarkable turnaround in my life where I discovered for the first time the love of Jesus Christ. Could I know God? Absolutely. And I knew him in the person of Jesus Christ. It, was, it moved me then and it's continued to move me all of those years. But also when I think of the sheep, I'm reminded that I'm a shepherd. And my greatest need as a shepherd is to take care of the sheep. It's a remarkable responsibility for those in pastoral ministry. But more than that, when I look at the sheep, I'm reminded that I'm a sheep too under the care of a loving Heavenly Father who is the great shepherd of the sheep. And I'm reminded again that he holds me and cares for me. One of the programmes that Sue and I love to watch is of a, of a farm up uh, in the Yorkshire Moors. I think it's the Moors or the Dales, uh, but it's in some bleak part of the north of the country. And seeing the way that the shepherds on that farm take care of their sheep reminds me again so powerfully of the love of our Heavenly Father who looks after us whatever the season. 
Let me give you another example uh, of how God communicates. Um, I was in a shop um, nearby just recently and up on the wall uh, there was this picture and uh, let me read it to you. It's by Denzel Washington, the Hollywood superstar. It says, at the end of the day, it's not about what you have or even what you've accomplished. It's about who you've lifted up, who you've made better. It's about what you've given back. Those were God moments for me as I was in the middle of just a, a, a retail um, a shopping spree ready for Christmas. <laughs> God met me and reminded me again and took me back to that BBC headline of the nun in the slums of Egypt who'd given up a well-paid job, who'd given up a, a university professorship so that she could do some of the things that Denzel Washington just talked about, about giving her life for others. I guess what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is that we need to listen to God with our eyes as much as we listen to God with our ears. He is speaking to us all of the time in unusual places and in unusual ways. This Christmas time, my prayer for myself, my family, uh, and for each of you, is that we would see and hear the voice of God, and that we would move, be moved again uh, to follow him wholeheartedly uh, in service, love, and joy. May God bless you.